For Karima Media in Johannesburg, I'm Sashni Mudli. Joining me today is Integrated Operations Expert, Andy Shearing, here to discuss his book, Don't Digitize Your Rubbish. Welcome, Andy. Hi, thank you. Before we get into the book, can you just give our viewers um, briefly some background into your career in mining and consulting? 40 years in mining. Um, I'm actually a mineral processing engineer uh, by background, but in later life I've got much more into mining generally and, uh, and uh, leadership, general leadership roles. Majority of my working life has been in operations. So, and, and you know, up to sort of general manager operation level roles, uh, Palabora, Copper here in South Africa for quite a while. That's where I cut my teeth uh, and worked my way up through the organization. Completely different change to Australia, uh, salts, industrial minerals. Um, then across to a very large uh, coal mine in the United States and Wyoming. Then back to uh, in the US, uh, back to Australia, um, in the uh, technology and innovation group. This was all within Rio Tinto, which is an interesting perspective in itself to stay within one organization and see the differences across that. So very operational, running teams, getting things done, uh, and then into the technology and innovation space. Um, and then the last, the last role I did in my corporate 28 years in corporate was uh, I led the design and delivery of the Rio Tinto Iron Ore Operation Center in Perth. It's a world first, it was groundbreaking, it was a massive remote operation center with an integrated planning function and really reset the standard of what you could do with higher tech operations and remote operations. And basically that runs uh, a thousand kilometers from Perth, out of Perth, it runs 13 mines, uh, four ports, 1,500 kilometers of rail, uh, power stations feeding into the network, remote condition monitoring of equipment. It's absolutely phenomenal. With a mandated uh, central sort of nerve center um, control of this entire ecosystem, which is scattered over hundreds of kilometers, so I said 1,000 kilometers from Perth. So that was a real game changer uh, for the industry and very interesting working that out and how to do that right uh, as a first. You're mm -hmm. starting with a clean sheet of paper. There's no blueprint on that. And it was massively successful, added, added huge value to the, to the business. And more importantly, reset the, the thinking, the paradigm on what is possible with operations if you really approach things in the right way. So at that point, uh, I, I left the corporate world and went into independent consulting and I took five years to really figure out what it is, you know, what it's, because it, it was more than just about a centre, I knew that, but I didn't really figure out what it, couldn't really figure out what it was and the more I talked to operations that wanted to, I, I consulted to 25 or so of the big majors all over the world. As much as I said, look, it's not all about a centre, uh, but let me explain it in the form of a centre, that's all they had in their mind. And even to this day, people think it's all about a centre, mm. uh, which it absolutely isn't. So I spent five years really cracking the code on what it is. And it is integration. The, the, the missing link is integration, of which Remote Operation Centre is, is a small subset of, of, of a, a, a range of elements which you need to tackle. So cracking that actually working out, not just at a high level and why this is important, why it's important now, didn't used to be important, all of these things, and, and what's the framework and how to approach that, but getting right down into the nuts and bolts mm. detail of what this looks like in the front line. Because a lot of people talk about stuff in operations mm. at a high level. The devil's in the detail, always. And I got that to a point where I thought, this is it, we've cracked it, this is, this is the answer. But then you realize that unless you've, you can shift the mindset of a leadership team uh, and get them to hold the course and really embrace transformational change, you've just got a great idea that people pick bits out of. And the point of integration, you can't bit, pick bits out of it. It's, it's, it's about simplification through real holistic alignment. So at that point, uh, I partnered with the best leadership-led co-design transformational change uh, consultants that I'd come across, uh, three individuals, and uh, we created Next Gen OPEX, which stands for Next Generation Operating Platform. And that now embraces 
really how to deliver this change. That is what we do now. So going from an independent consultant, trying to help businesses to do it themselves, to actually now being able to take this to businesses. And that's what we are busy doing and have done. Now moving to your book, uh, you open your book with a bold statement, the mining industry has a problem. You say it's not ready for major technological and social change. So what are these changes that you are alluding to um, and why isn't the industry ready? It's, it's interesting and that, and that you know, conclusion comes from working in the industry in the front line of operations in different parts of the world and different cultures, the problems are the same. And then going and doing that and, cons and consulting to dozens more companies uh, and seeing exactly the same. The reality is what we're seeing is, is the industry struggling with productivity and it's sliding backwards. And there are reasons for that. Um, the complexity of running operations has changed dramatically over the past few decades. Dramatically. It used to be much more autonomous and, you know, there weren't too many distractions. You were left to your own devices. Um, and the general manager would integrate and really optimize. Now you've got much greater focus on health and safety and environment and community and, and compliance and regulatory and national issues and you know, the ESG and you've got data coming out of your ears and you've got more corporate initiatives and you look at a general manager of operations, he's barely on site half the, half the time, you know? Um, and you combine that with the fabric of a team which has changed profoundly over this period. Used to be, you know, 25 years, 18 years, 16 years. Now, you're lucky if you know, three months, six months, 12 months. That's a reality of life, both of those things. You can't change, it's not, it's not wrong, it, it is what, where society has gone. One of the questions is, so is this integration that's now just a new buzzword? Uh, no, it's always been important, but it used to happen naturally because of that setup. It doesn't happen naturally now, so we really need to systematize that. Because we got incredibly smart people, but you need, we, need to, we need to accelerate their, their learning and uh, their development and their understanding of how to optimize operations. And at the moment, it is anything but um, systemic and sustainable. What's the problem? Operations are going backwards. Um, struggling with that, don't quite know why. Technology is going exponentially up, like at an unbelievable mm -hmm. pace, as we know. And there's this sort of inference that, well, this is the silver bullet solution. That's going to solve all these pesky people issues, you know. And that's clearly not right. You know, if you, and that's the point of the book, don't digitize your rubbish. If you, if you digitize that dysfunctionality, then you just get repeatable dysfunctionality. What is desperately needed in the industry, and I've seen this at every operation uh, right across the world with the best of the best operations, um, we need to clarify and simplify and focus uh, operation, uh, people within operations around the right thing and the right behavior. And the fact is that at the moment, operations are set up in a way, once you look at this through the lens of integration, you see it as clear as day. You kind of can't see it when you're dealing with all the fighting fires and so on. But once you look at it through that lens, you see exactly why everyone's pulling in different directions. And that's what this is about. It's, it's a much smarter way uh, to set up your businesses, not only to deal with today, but to position yourself for tomorrow. And you do note in your book that senior operational leadership uh, focus more on short-term issues than planning for long-term change. Um, so what are the effects of this management, some of the effects? It's horrible. I mean, I, I, I remember when I started out, I, I was sort of inspired by the quality of the leadership and the company and that the, the directors were inspiring. It was about long-term shareholder value and, you know, environment, community. These things are important now, but the way the business was operated um, was much more investing in the future. Today, I characterize it as, as sadly, the, the focus is much more like short-term sh uh, share price. That's, that's, how the, that's what drives things. Again, you can't just be critical on, on that. That's kind of a reality of the, the news cycle, but all of it is pressuring people to short-term, short-term, short-term. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that you go to operations and they have hundreds, usually thousands of initiatives. 
and they're all short-term initiatives, and they're all point solutions. And each one of those point solutions is, is, um, fixes one problem, but it often creates another problem. There's nothing systemic about it. It's, it's what are all the issues, let's target those and let's drive them. And the way they're driven, I use the term, they're driven with a big stick and a loud voice. And it works. That's how you get to be a manager. That's how I got to be a successful manager. And you work your way up. It works. You go in there, you, you see all the mess, and you focus. You say, here are the key things. Let's clear a few other things out of the way. Drive it hard. There's your improvement. Here's what happens next. And I've seen it just, this happens all the time. This is the industry. The next person comes in, clears the deck of the table, says, right, now what's going on? Uh, what have I done previously? Okay, now we're going to focus on this, this, and this. So all those things that you've improved with a big stick and a loud voice, not systemically, not sustainably, just with drive, come down again. And this is what we see. We see up and down and up and down. So everyone knows how to drive improvement, anyone worth their salt. You know, in operations, they don't have a problem with that. Consultants don't have a problem with that. But it's not sustainable. So what we, what we are, the problem we're trying to solve is not how to drive improvement. It's how to drive systemic, sustainable improvement. And once you, if you can drive that improvement that holds at that level, you then created the platform for the next level of, which is now getting into the technological change. Uh, it's a game changer. And, and the, the amount of value there is not a few percent. This is tens of percent. And I would say, uh, I've seen it, you know, in the best of the best mining companies in the world, there would be 20% latent inefficiencies between all the parts of an organization and in the way the whole is run. It's not, it's, you know, the way it's run is it's run with, by focusing on the parts and the mining and the processing and the logistics and the costs and so on. There's very little on the interfaces and the whole. It's quite a difficult thing to do uh, and, th and that's, what, that's what we do. So that's, that's our, our approach. And you mentioned this earlier in your book also raises the point that integration is the missing link to drive change. Just tell us more about how um, integration should be utilized. I characterize integration as this isn't some radical theory. This is about aligning everyone and everything in the business around delivery of the game plan, mm. right? How radical is that? Ain't what happens. It's not what happens at all. So. Very commonly, the strategy of a business is not actually very well put in place, but let's say it is well put in place. It's not, often not then translated into an operating philosophy. How are we going to run this, this operation? And then into an operating model, how do we set up the, the operation to run within that philosophy to deliver that, that uh, strategy? And really, it's about getting clear on that and then hardwiring that into the business across the business and down through the business. That takes, there's a lot of detail in that. And there, there are two different elements to that. You've, you've got to hardwire the guys in the front line who are making all the money. You've got, to, you've got to make sure that everything is there to support them and is aligned up the way through. It often isn't. The metrics are different. The drivers are different. The messaging's different. The level of support is different. You're throwing in different things to confuse them. It's very confusing. So getting clear on what should be being done in the front line and then aligning everyone above to, to make sure that they're supporting that. But then equally, the other piece is the long term, the strategy. How do you cascade the strategy down through each of these parts of the business? Not just through the operations and the value chain, but into the support functions. And people you know, sometimes say, wow, that sounds hard. You know, that uh, sounds very complicated. And then you say, you say well, Compared to what? Compared to just everyone gets in there and kind of does their thing. We got, the, we got the general gist of it and we all go and there's way too many degrees of freedom. A lot of the mining industry, a lot of the, a lot of the dysfunctionality within the industry has been written off as, yeah, well, that's mining, it's tough business, you know. That's rubbish. That's lazy thinking, especially as technology is coming in more and more. The mining industry needs to be more like a, a sausage machine much less degrees of freedom, much greater clarity, much greater user friendliness. And we've got, to, we've got to focus much more on making it easier for people to do their jobs. That is not what we do at the moment in the industry. And that's really the essence of what I'm saying. And I, I just want to emphasize, I, I'm, not, I'm not 
trying to cane the, the, the mining industry. It's a, it's a brilliant industry. I love it. I've got the highest respect for it. It does wonderful and great things. But in terms of the way it sets up its operations, this, this is a huge untapped value opportunity. A huge, as I said, 20, 30, 40, 50 percent latent value. It's, it's enormous and it's been ignored. And there's the sort of sense that technology is going to sort all that out. Mm. It ain't going to sort it out. You need to sort it out first. And the, the essence of, we, we, use int, we look at integration as simply a vehicle to drive simplification of a business and make it easier for people to do the right things. Lastly, who is your book specifically aimed at? Primarily, uh, I think most importantly is the, is the decision makers and the game changers in the businesses. So it's, it's the upper level of, of senior management who um, can change the world. And, you know, it comes back to that earlier point, the turnover of people in roles. It, it, it's sadly quite rare to find a leader that is courageous enough mm -hmm. and is willing to uh, focus on the future, which he may not see or he or she may not see, and invest in building the fabric of the business that is going to last for decades into the future. Unfortunately, all the drivers and the metrics and the bonuses and the motivations are all saying, don't complicate your life, just, just fast track, high, high grade, you know, go improve things in the short term during your tenure, you get a big tick, you move on. It's wrong. You know, the, the Jim Collins book, Good to Great, famous book. It talks about very well documented uh, 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 background and research. It talks about, you know, the normal run of the mill companies. They chase the latest thing. And you can think back on mining, you know, there's the latest, what's the latest thing? And, and you chase it and it's up and then it's down. It's up and down and up and down. You're chasing after the latest bright, shiny thing that comes along. The great companies are really clear on what they are great at. And they invest constantly into improving systemically that thing mm -hmm. and do it better and better and better. And the next, ma the ma next leader that comes into a role, they don't say, clear that now. What's my background? How am I going to do it? And then the next person the same. What they do is they come and they say, okay, here's the way of doing it. Now I can see some better ways of doing it. But let's lift, lift that systemically. Mm -hmm. It's an absolute no-brainer, as we say in Australia. The absolute no-brainer. I mean, why, why would you not do that? Why would you not get really clear on what you're trying to do? I use the analogy of a, of a soccer team. You, you look at some great countries with fantastic superstars, and they throw all these superstars together, and they're hopeless. They're all trying to, trying to win the game themselves. And then you've, you've got the ordinary, mediocre kind of team who come in, and they work out the game plan and everyone knows their role, and they are just disciplined. They trust each other, they know, and those teams can beat those great teams. It's no different. Why would you not do that, I would say? And we're not doing it, and we need to do it, and this is really important for the, for the industry, because if, 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 if we don't get this right, what's gonna happen is you are gonna come in and digitize everything, and you're gonna find it doesn't work, and some companies have already crossed that bridge, but it's gonna increasingly happen. And that will just dampen the curve of potential change of uh, technology. We've got to deal. We've got to simplify what we do, clarify, focus, align, digitize that. You, you're going great places. That was integrated operations expert Andy Shering speaking to Creamer Media about his book, Don't Digitize Your Rubbish.